Okay, we got a 2002 Chrysler Town & Country with a misfire fault. This is a 3.8 liter V6, pretty standard Chrysler design ignition system for a long time. So we have some EVAP faults that we're not worried about. We're just addressing the misfire. So we're gonna focus on this number four miss and then multiple cylinder misfire. Uh, basically what we're gonna do first is a cylinder drop test because we have a dead miss. It's misfiring all the time. The test we're going to do is very basic. And the first thing you need is an incandescent test light. You cannot use an LED test light for this. You will burn it out. The only reason I'm using a test light is I'm using it as a, as a jumper wire. And it's just because it has a straight probe on it. That's it. It's the only reason I'm doing that. I could use a jumper wire if I wanted to for this test, but I don't really want to get electrocuted. So we're using the test light instead. You can go to the battery if you want to. I don't like to go to the battery because high energy, high speed, spark coming out of this thing. Uh, it's not a problem as long as there's no air gap here, but if we have an air gap or a bad connection at the battery, then we're gonna have sparks going on at the battery, which we don't want. So anything metal on the car, even a painted surface is fine because this high energy spark is just going to go to ground no matter what. It doesn't have to be an exact great ground like I would need for regular test light type testing. So just a basic cylinder drop test is all I'm doing. We can feel the miss. You can see the, the shake in the camera or the shake on my hand. We had a number four miss, which was this one. We can actually start with that. Holding the test light closer than my hand so I don't get electrocuted. I'm pulling the plug wire off. Notice no spark at all on this number four, okay? So it looks like potentially a bad ignition coil, but before we call this coil as being bad, we wanna make sure that the, its companion cylinder, which is the opposite side over here, has spark. All right, so this one's gonna tell me everything, this companion cylinder right here. And I need to be careful, again, holding the test light closer than my, than my hand so I don't get electrocuted. And this is not like death electrocution, this is just it hurts type shock. And you see that we have spark on the back half of this coil. So really, you're done at this point. This needs an ignition coil. Let me plug that back, back in. That got me a little bit because I put my finger a little closer than the light. I don't recommend this procedure if you have a pacemaker. I have a friend who does have a pacemaker that this is not a good test for him. Um, so basically what we just done, the middle coil right here is has spark on one half and it doesn't on the other. That's my number four miss for sure that we had in memory. And when we have an issue like this with no spark on a coil, you have to worry about the primary. Is there activity on the primary? If there was no primary activity, we'd have no spark here too. So we're done. This needs an ignition coil. The rest of them, that's how you would do it. We jumped right at the number four because of the code. Last piece you need to worry about. We have a number four that's not firing. We have to worry about this plug and this wire. So if you're in the field, what you'd wanna do, change this coil, definitely put a set of plugs and wires on it as an insurance policy. And, uh, you know, of course, you can move plugs and wires around and do some tests that way, too. That's up to you guys on how you want to handle that. But that's it. You go through the rest of them the same way, listening for RPM changes as you're sorting the cylinders. Faulty ignition coil. Nothing more than a test light showing it. Second test I want to try to show on this coil is a primary current pattern. And the reason we want to do that, or the reason why we want to develop this is on a lot of vehicles, we can't get to the coils or underneath the intake manifold. So do we have a test that can identify a partially sorted coil? And we do, and it's using an amp probe on the feed wire that goes to the coils. Doesn't matter where the coils are located, we can read them. So I'm hoping I can show you this. I just have the amp probe connected to the feed, to the coil. We go to the scope. Let's see what our, our ramps look like. Go to my low amp 20. That's good. Can you start that? Okay, cool. Uh, move that 
uh, zero line down on the screen a little bit. Good. All right, we have some scope aliasing here because we have too much time base going on. So drop our time base down, hit the one second. Yep, and let's go down to like 20 milliseconds or 25 or whatever. 20 works. And we got some noise in there and the reason, yeah, close that out, just hit back. All right, the reason that noise is there is we have a plug wire that's laying right against our amp probe. You see it? Let me show it. See the plug wire laying against our amp probe? We need to shield that somehow to get that away from there because that's why that looks like that. See the rounded edge on that? I gotta, we gotta get that plug wire away from there. We can't analyze that at all. There's too much noise. That's better, still pretty noisy. Set a trigger real quick. You can see it here, even though that we have noise from this coil, you see the one that has the the weird arc and then it's kind of missing an oscillation right there, that is your shorted coil. Um, all three coils are being drawn over top of each other here. Not the greatest test, I agree, for this particular problem. Let's maybe go 20 amp, trying to make this more evident. All three coils are being drawn over top of each other here. Maybe if I throw a filter in there. That's better. Okay, see the, see the curve in the one? So that's all three of the coils. They're all being drawn over top of each other. If I, if I freeze that, I'll show you maybe zoomed out. Good and bad here. And this is, you know, it's a subtle test. That's a good one. See the turn on oscillation right there? That's a bad one. See how it's missing? bad good get this out of here that's a bad one those are both good that's a good one that's a good one that's the bad one now look at it live again you can see it all three being drawn over top of each other that's what you would do on a, on a vehicle where an intake is covering everything and you can't get to the coil and do a basic test like we just did this test right here also shows you you have a secondary uh, a secondary problem in that coil is what we're looking at in that waveform. Very subtle, hard to pick out on this one. I, gi I give you that, but that is a method that works. Okay, last one is our secondary ignition using a little uh, secondary probe. Okay, we're using this guy. It's called a Wise probe. I've shown this before. And uh, we're just going over top of the plug wires one at a time. All right, so the probe we want to use is our ignition. And all that does is set your scales up for you. And so all we're going to do is hold this probe onto a plug wire, look for a waveform. We got to adjust the triggers to get it to be stationary and stable. Um, if we want detail, that is. This thing needs calibrated, man. I, I don't even know what I'm doing here. All right, so that's a good one. Showing you spark, moving down the line. This is our, let's get off of that. Auto. Gotta make sure we're on an auto trigger here. Notice this one has no signal at all. Go to the next one and the pattern is upside down, which is typical of a waste spark. All we do is hit invert and there's that one. All right, so that one's got spark. This one over here has spark. Invert again. And this middle one, notice we have nothing. Okay, go in the back. This is its companion cylinder. And that test alone tells you your coil's bad. The fact that I have spark on the companion cylinder and do not on the front. Now we could have a short there are variables to this, which is why we use the test light too, but that's it. This is a pretty 
pretty quick test in identifying an issue. This is the other two in the back. Okay, and then the last one, invert it each time. And then here's our dead one again. Three different methods. Secondary was one, primary was another, and then a basic test light is the third. Of course, the basic test light one, honestly, in this case, is my preference. We don't need all this high-tech fancy stuff. How quick is using a test light? Go right to it. Test light to ground. One last time. No spark. You worry about the companion in the back. Tells you everything you need to know. Bad ignition coil. All right. Okay. Um, we have the new coil installed. We're just going to redo this cylinder number four drop test. I'm um, just connecting my test light to, uh, you know, something metal. Let's start that up and I'll show you the, show you the result. So I have a little bit of a misfire. Something to consider is when a, a I hear a big vacuum leak too. That would have helped to plug that vacuum hose in there, Eddie, but that's okay. Um, one of the things we have to consider when we have a vehicle that's been misfiring for a long period of time is that spark plug on the number four would be soaking wet with fuel. Not all of the systems will shut the injector off. And so uh, any miss you have in a repair like this can be associated with a wet spark plug, something to consider. But let's see if we have spark here now. Ah, we do. And the fact that I got shocked here and see the spark jumping out of the wire is suggesting that this plug wire is actually open internally and it's looking for a place to go. Like that should not be doing that. So what cooked this coil, guys? What cooked this coil is an open plug wire. That's too high, too high a voltage that's in this section. So that plug wire is bad. He cannot take this vehicle. And this is a good lesson as to why we want to put plugs and wires in anytime you have a bad coil. If I would leave this here and let this go, I mean, it is still missing too, while it would be like that. Um, we really don't wanna run this car much longer uh, with this condition. And let me try something here. With that sorted there, I should keep myself from getting electrocuted. Um, it's kinda sketchy here. There is. I am actually getting some spark down here, but it's real weak. All right, shut this off. I, I honestly didn't expect that. And actually when I pulled that spark plug wire off, pulled right apart on the inside and that's usually where they'll where they'll be bad too is on the end they'll open up so let's do this we'll do a quick this is not what we want to do typically we need to replace these but this guy wants to take his van he didn't tell us he was coming to take it so we're going to do a quick field repair i need a pair of needle nose two pair of needle nose or one pair of needle nose and a Enough. And this. All right. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to open this up. And this kit. This. These are horrible pliers, Caleb. All right, which one of you guys have a sharp uh, razor blade? Anyone? Yeah, this is, the end of this is really hard and brittle. And that's what happens with these. This is where, anytime you have an open plug wire, the open plug wire is always going to be on the end by the heat. You never see them in the middle. I've never seen them in the middle, always down at the plug end. 
So doing a quick repair, this is super hard and brittle and it was actually broken off at the end. Uh, what I wanna do is cut the end of this off, get rid of all the burnt part. And again, this is not the uh, preferred method, but this is a quick and dirty field method. And then what I'll do is I'll stress the wire and bend it like this. And then I'll start working with the razor blade to where I just see, see if that's showing up. Let's get a light on that. Start to see the black inside piece as soon as you see the inside carbon then we want to turn it and do the same thing till we see the black on the inside turn it again guys the only reason i'm doing this is this guy wants to take this I'm gonna get him fixed so he can take it and then he can put plugs and wires on it himself. Okay, so that's, the, that's where the spark's coming from is this inside carbon. Made, it's made of some kind of carbon material. All right, from there, before we put the end on, we really wanna use some kind of lubricant to push this back through. Um, sometimes it can go pretty easily. Um, in a pinch, I've used engine oil from the dipstick. Again, this is this is emergency type stuff here, guys. I just need this to go into this boot. You're stuck on the side of the road. You need to know how to do stuff like this. You know how many videos I have with Karen saying time to clean up? I have so many. <laughs> that was Karen, you guys heard in the background here at Rosedale Technical College. She's very good at that. Yeah. I'm having trouble pushing this through. I don't want to pull on that on that carbon piece like I am, but you gotta do what you gotta do. It actually worked. All right, from there, what we want to do, fold this over like that. And on the folded part, so we see that, we put the folded part toward the closed end of this terminal. It's a pretty crappy looking terminal too. Should have cleaned that up, but time is of essence here. As you heard, we got the time to clean up call. And this will be ugly with this tool. They actually make tools that are designed to crimp spark plug wires. Do you have one, Eddie? Uh, pliers would probably be a little bit better, but your um, wire strippers, you guys have any wire strippers? Your wire strippers actually have an end on it that are made for crimping plug wires. This will be an ugly one, but again, emergency is what we're going after here. I usually try to like get these fingers hooked in and pressed down. I mean, that's good enough for right now. So now what I want to do is pull the wire back down inside of it. This is tight. Real tight. Yeah, I really should have had some dielectric grease here. Okay, that's far enough in there now. Let's get this back on the car. All right, so the reason that was jumping out of the spark plug wire right here was because the terminal end was bad down here at the plug and all of that energy was building up in this plug wire and it was finding an easier path. So when I put my test light here right now, it should not jump out of here anymore. Go ahead and start that again.
notice we are no longer jumping out in that location. So a lot of people would see that and they'd say, hey, that's a bad plug wire right there. It's bad right here. It wasn't bad here. The reason it was jumping out of that location, again, was because of the high KV being built up in this wire and it found an easy path right there. So still feels like we have a little bit of a miss. However, a wet spark plug down there. I at least feel comfortable that I can give this back to him. Another way we could have caught that would have been with the, um, the Wise probe that we had on there, that secondary KV probe. And what we would have seen is a real, real high spark line. Um, what I'll do for this, I'll throw in an image right here. We'll put it like right there, right, wait, right there. I'll throw an image. And what you're looking at where I'm pointing is a open secondary. You see a real high firing KV like this. Um, you gotta be worried about burning up a coil. That will burn up a coil. That energy from this coil, it releases, it creates that big pocket of energy. It needs somewhere to go. And if it has nowhere to go, it will burn the coil out like we saw. So again, standard in the field, you see one coil tower not firing, the other one is. That coil tower is burnt. It's found a path through the housing. And what causes that a lot is an open plug wire, which is exactly what we had. Uh, I can now show you the test. I'm not getting electrocuted anymore. Test light to ground. Good spark from the number four now. Final fix for this guys, he needs to replace, needs to replace the plugs and wires. But that's good enough he can take it home. All right, cool.